Hi everybody, my name is Lynn Ismail and welcome to my garden. It is September 2nd, no, this is September 3rd and it's Sunday. It is supposed to be 20 degrees but it feels a little bit more humid so I, um, it's 9 o'clock, it's a little bit late for me to get started but because it's a long weekend I kind of lagged a little bit. But anyway, whoo! Sorry, there was a hummingbird just right there, just perched. Let's see if I can uh, capture that before it goes away. That's the hummingbird. See that? Oh, so cute. So cute. I stay focused, camera. Oh. That's why I don't get much done around here. Just like I just, I have all these little insects that distract me. Never seen them before. Well. A lot of them I haven't seen before because I've always lived in the city and I didn't have a garden this big, this size. But anyway, oh, it's still there. Seems to like my, uh, what is it like? Oh, there's two of them. <gasps> there's two of them. Wow. And then they're gone. Oh, no. Let me see if I can catch that. See the little guy? All right. Oops. Oh, that's a verbena. That's right. It's perch right there. Come on, focus. Nope. Right here. Oh. Oh, it's right there. Oh, there. There you go. Ah. And it's gone. Well, it flew away and then it's back. Wow, there's three of them. Oh, hello. Hi, what do you like? I'm sorry I don't have any more salvias left. But you're more than welcome to eat anything else. Oh well, anyway. Um, my plan is to plant some cover crops on the bed where I had my ranunculus. Um, I tried planting the Japanese buckwheat a few weeks ago, but I didn't cover them. So I think that's why the birds, well, I'm assuming the birds um, plucked them out because I saw little seedlings that were plucked out of their, plucked out of the ground. So I'm hoping that if I see them and I cover it with uh, some type of cover, like a frost cover that lets some light in, it should be able to deter birds from getting in there. I probably just use a uh, shade cloth too but it'll be hot for the next little while, the next four days, but after that it'll be more um, more seasonal. So having the cover crop there until it's germinated, until it's tall enough that I can deter the or tall enough until the birds leave it alone. And um, well that's my plan anyway. I'm gonna do that and I also have my grow bags that line my fence area. I need to remove those because I'm planning on growing some perennial cut flowers. So I'm just going to plant in the ground next year instead of just using those grow bags just because it's easier to irrigate. When you use grow bags, you have to use more water unless you plant things that are more drought tolerant. So just to give me more options next year, I'm just going to take those grow bags out, put them somewhere else, and plant in ground for next year. So these are my grow bags, and here's the path that's full of weeds. So my plan is take these out, put them where the weeds are now, just to suppress them for this year. And then underneath these grow bags, um, there won't be anything there. So I'll just rake it a little bit and um, put some triple mix on top and then just sow seeds in there. So that's my plan. But before I do that, I have to dismantle the irrigation. I don't know if I can show it properly here. So what I did was insert the irrigation, well, made a hole in the grow bag and made a insert the irrigation tubing through the grow bag. She thought it was a good idea, but it's just going to make my heart, my work, 
making a job difficult for later. For now, anyway. What am I trying to say? I thought it was a good idea earlier, but now that I have to dismantle it, it's gonna make my job a little bit trickier. So, all of the, well, some of these are still okay. But I found that South Big Glosses, they are they're quite that drought tolerant, so I think they'll be okay if I, uh, if I take the irrigation out for now. But all of these ones, this is Cress. Um, that's my shadow there. This emerald press. Emerald pearl. I'm not sure I got it from the red. But um, it is cut and come again. It's cut it from the bottom. They cut the lead and it'll do some side shoots. So I like it. I'll grow them again next year. Um, and some stock. Stock that I didn't uh, harvest. Got some agastaches that self-seeded from last year. I have to replant those somewhere else. This, they're perennials. They're great. Well, I guess I can plant them right there. Now I was probably going to do. And over here. Um, the remnants of my um, Lavaterra. The seeds have already exploded, so maybe I'll have some self-seeded Lavaterra next year. So I've cut off the, the my irrigation dismantle my irrigation so I'll have to rejig this and create an irrigation for the ground instead of um, elevated like this kind of hard to see but I've already planted a viburnum burkwoodii on this spot it's still a baby so just a one gallon container from Northland nursery and I don't expect it to be ready for harvesting for foliage until it's, until it's three years old. So I'll, I'll grow up to eight, at least eight feet spread, about eight feet wide, maybe ten. Um, but if I keep cutting it, it should be it should fit this little space nicely. So, so to be careful, and don't disturb any spiders. Ever since the population of spiders moved in. Um, I don't notice as much mosquito activity here. Well, that's a good thing, I suppose. I'm just weaving these through. I don't know if I can reuse it again, but I'll save it anyway. Just let you know. It's like I got it. some weed. Probably easier if I just cut them every few feet or so. Tribuli, no, that's not called in Tribuli. It's an Agastaki Globe Trotter. Yeah. They've self seeded from not this one, but um, another Globe Trotter right around there. But it's not terribly hardy. That's why it's a good thing it self seeds itself. So my plan is to move the grow bags into this path that I'm currently standing on right now, but I have to rejig 
the irrigation, which means that if I do that, I'm, I won't have any place to stand up. So I'm just going to move them over there for now. And when I'm done, I'll, I'll put them back where I wanted them to be. Maybe I'll just put it right there. So that's what it looks like without the grow bags. I'm gonna try to connect um, an irrigation, at least two lines of irrigation here, just to make sure that the buckwheat that I'm planting will, or sowing, will germinate. You do have to get rid of those um, creeping charlies though. It's better than a buying weed because at least this doesn't really kill, um, doesn't strangle other plants. I just prevent other seeds from germinating which is a good thing too for noxious and um, noxious invasive species I just get rid of these as much as I can anyway See that I have some bind weed here. Not a bind weed. Where are you? There. This one, just have to be careful that the rhizomes don't get replanted somewhere else. Have some. Oh. Self seeded frosted explosion, and I'm um, not sure if what kind of Achelia this is, if it's, um, if it's a natural one or one of the varieties that are not, or I don't know what you call them, varieties with prettier colors. This I leave. Um, so I'm assuming it's from this uh, yarrow, the Colorado mix yarrow that I got. So I'll, I'll leave this here and see how what they how they turn out next spring. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my irrigation supply so I can um, I can fix this before I sow my seeds. I think what I'm going to do is uh, keep it there. I have to take off more of these. But uh, this one is a coupler from like a half inch to a three four, three, three quarter to a half inch um, tubing, or half inch to one. I don't know. Anyway, from bigger one to a smaller one. So from seventeen millimeter to seventeen millimeter, to twelve millimeter. So it ends in there, and then I can attach. Uh, the 12 millimeter tubing right in this smaller coupler here. I got my cup filled with just boiled water just so it's easier for me to insert the um, this tubing to a coupler or the other way around. Easier for me to insert a coupler into a tubing if the um, if the tube is more malleable. You see that? Oh, maybe not. Stay there a bit more. You just have to be careful you don't pour your cup onto you. Okay, it's more than five seconds. Uh, 
that's that. I'm going to need to have a, a staple or like a landscape staple to hold that down. I'll worry about that later. So now I'm going to put this it's like about six inches right here. And then from here, we put. How do we put this? Just like this. Change my mind. So I think I'm going to put this here and then here and then another one here and then this one here just so I have at least two lines going parallel across each other to irrigate this spot here so let's do this I want this to face down, so I'm gonna insert it that way. Well, I guess do the same thing here. The hole is right on top. I want it, the hole to be painting down, pointing down, easy enough to move around. Okay. So now I'll have two lines that I can run through. One here, and another one there. Just have to move this higher. For on this end, though, um, I think I'll get a coupler. This this coupler here over here, and then from here, I'll just. Do this and then six inches on the other side. I think that would work maybe? Or maybe I'll just stick with what I got over there. I'll figure it out. Now I have two um, two couplers here to connect to the others to the other side. Now I have to do the other one as well over there. It's kind of hard to see, but this is um, an emitter tubing. You don't want to cut it close to it because otherwise. Um, whatever the thing that's keeping the pressure in gets damaged. So you want to cut it in between two meters or go right in the middle if you can. This will be a good spot there. I'm hoping I'm correct. This is self-seated Verbena bonariensis. Just 
and let it there. Maybe let it leave it there for now. Maybe it'll flower by the, before the end of the season. And then that's good. Uh, good source of pollen for pollinators. Hummingbirds like them. Bees like them. Butterflies like them. So keep it there for now. Okay, so I think I have to put some landscape staples there just to keep these in place. But, so this is good for now. I don't have to go to the other side. So this is the part where my microphone died. But we're here, I was just showing the end product of how I attached the two the tubes into the couplers and what it looks like afterwards. Here I'm just broadcasting some buckwheat seeds and I'm just overseeding because I'm not sure how the germination would be. But I'm using buckwheat because it's supposed to scavenge potassium and phosphorus from the soil so that it'll be available for the next coming crops. And after I've broadcasted the seed, I'm over here just covering them up with some triple mix just to make sure that they're fully covered and then just water them. I've also decided to put some cover on top. It's a, it's a row cover. Usually you use it as a frost cover, but for now it's just to keep the birds away from digging and stealing my buckwheat. Just make sure that they germinate. And that's what it looks like now. I'm using the grow pots to hold the cover, the frost cover in place together. So because my microphone's battery died, I didn't have a proper outro. So here I am talking away and not realizing that my microphone is not, my audio is not working properly. But in this shot, I was just letting people know that if you like this content or you enjoyed watching this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. It just helps other people find my content because that's how the YouTube algorithm works. If you have any comments, please write them down in the comments below. If you have any thoughts on the methods I use or if you would have done something else different. I like to read your comments because I learn from your input as well. So feel free to comment down below. I try to show up every Thursday here in YouTube. So until you, I see you again next week, bye.